Gale at Valley and Beyond Project Awakening Facebook Live video. We're here this morning with Gail O'Reilly, and we're going to talk about a little bit about our experience with meditation and maybe some life stories and, and uh, um, you know, how we got started and a little bit about our vision for for Project Awakening and Valley and Beyond and stuff. So we're glad you're here and thanks for dropping in. And we ask you maybe to share this uh, with uh, your friends and and, uh, um, and kind of share the message uh, you hear at Valley and Beyond and, and Project Awakening. We have um, like we have a mission. We, we we'd like to see a meditation space in every home, in every place of work, and and. Uh, we we, we want to lift the vibration of the planet. This is uh, one of our mantras, is that we want to lift the vibration of the planet one meditator at a time. And So it's kind of a cause. And uh, if you want to join the cause and, and help us lift the vibration of the planet, I think that um, rather than focusing on, you know, the nuts and bolts of life, if we meditate, life just happens with ease. And, and uh, um, you know, lots of times we're restless, irritable, and discontent, and and uh, we can have that ease from meditating. And, and, and Gail's going to talk to us a bit about the, the, the fact that we can meditate anywhere. And, and um, that, you know, um, I, I think if we have a place to meditate, you know, we can get that feeling. And, and when, then we can drop into that anywhere. And, and uh, you know, whether it's cooking in the kitchen or, you know, uh, out for a walk or running. Gail's going to talk about those, but Gail, tell us a bit about when, you know, when did you start meditating and, and how did you get into this? Well, uh, I had already been a trainer and teaching, you know, fitness and, and well-being to, to people mm -hmm. and I started to take yoga and quickly I discovered that when I learned to relax and breathe well, that how I felt in my body was completely different. Mm -hmm. And the outcome of the experience was completely different. And I started to essentially yearn for that deeper and then really started to think, well, why can't I, if I can incorporate this into, you know, exercises on a mat, yoga, mm -hmm. why can I not bring this union into movement? So I've been on this path for many, many years and I do believe now is the right time that people are opening to the possibility of this. Mm -hmm. And happening isn't it it absolutely mm -hmm. is and um, you know not to focus on negative but one of the reasons I think people are starting to tap in is because we're being forced to you know our world is changing we're in the Aquarian age which brings in a whole new realm of uh, mental disease you know we came from the Piscean age which was uh, physical ailments we're moving into a mental disease and we're already starting to see the effects of that you know people are moving at lightning speed in their life and the demands and the stress upon them is go growing greater. And then unfortunately, you know, we're seeing lots of, you know, massive shootings and different things. I don't obviously want to focus on negative things like that right now. But, but the reality is people are starting to realize that, you know, there, there has to be a deeper existence to life and a deeper sense of peace and, and happiness. Because if you just are living in this world, it's, it can be pretty sad. <laughs> Would yeah. you not agree? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that that um, you know, like meditation is like a refuge. Mm -hmm. it, it's like a that place we can go to. You know, and we we were just talking earlier that even a after you've gotten into the practice, even one breath can take you into that space. Mm -hmm. And and uh, we you just drop in and boom. And, yes. And so uh, yes, I think that the and, and I, I also think that. In my opinion, I'm a big uh, lover of Dr. David Hawkins, and Hawkins talks a lot about vibration and levels of vibration. And, and if we're vibrating, you know, in in fear and anger and resentment and, and uh, shame and guilt and all those things, then then we're living in that. Mm -hmm. and, and if we're vibrating at unconditional love, mm -hmm. um, well, those other things don't even exist, really. They don't. They and cannot exist. No. And so there, there may be a memory, you know, and and. Uh, and if you're like me, I can have maybe all of that in one day. <laughs> well, that's normal. And that's normal. And that's a good point that you just brought up is that sometimes people wonder if I, if I enter into this realm of 
you know, happiness. Do and if I pull out of it, is that am I yeah. like am I going to get back there, or is that normal that my I, I still feel anger yeah. or I still feel fear? Uh, you know, feel fear. That's absolutely normal. I mean, your body is made of energy, flowing energy, and mm -hmm. ideally, when it is flowing, that you do feel all those emotions. However, you don't stay stuck in them. Yeah. And so meditation helps clear those stuck emotions and helps you free yourself of those, you know, thought patterns that, you know, swirl around in our head over and over and over and take us away from that sense of who we really are and what we really want in life and mm -hmm. that sense of, like you said, one breath away from just feeling mm -hmm. ah, mm -hmm. so much better. Um, people, uh, I've been kind of surveying for, you know, since we decided that, you know, that, that, that since the vision came, since the, the, my purpose became really clear about helping people create meditation spaces, I've been asking people, like, just like there was a woman here just a few minutes ago where, uh, who came to pick up some stuff and she's pregnant for her third baby. She said, I don't have time to meditate, you know, and, <laughs> and that, you know, that's really our mission is to help people to realize that, that it, it doesn't take a lot of time, you know, that, that really, you know, and actually I talked to her in the back just a few minutes ago because she has children. I said, you know, if you can get your kids to sit for a minute, mm -hmm. eventually it'll be two and three, and then they'll say, Mommy, when, when are we going to meditate? Mm -hmm. You know, because and, and, they'll find that place inside of them. And I think it's a great uh, time to be teaching our kids to to find that divinity, that that space, that openness inside of us. Mm -hmm. they, yeah, it's a life skill. Mm -hmm. It's a life skill for, for staying Son of a gun. happy and healthy. It is. Um, yeah. And also, you made a very good point about the, the elevation of energy. So, you know, if one person in a household is finding this place of center and calm and elevating their energy, guess what? It, it transforms yeah. a household. Yeah. And so I've seen that time and time again with students and in my own household. Uh -huh. um, and sometimes that can be, you know, some people come along at... Uh, they're like, well, what's going on here? You know, you're, <laughs> you're happy screaming. or they're kicking, kicking and screaming. And screaming. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> but it really does change. Yeah, it really yeah. does change a household. And then, so one household, I love to do a meditation I've done before with students where you do, okay, so you're, you're elevating your energy. You feel a positive, you know, you're feeling compassion you know, gratitude, appreciation, mm -hmm. love, all these beautiful emotions that we talk about mm -hmm. that you really can, you know, center into and um, start with yourself, bring it into your room, bring it into your house, bring it into your neighborhood, into your city, mm -hmm. and then it just, you know, outward, outward. And yeah. then it, it really does have a transforming effect. Love. Yeah. The ripple effect of love. Mm -hmm. Yes. Awesome. Like that's, that's beautiful. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You can kind of do that at the beginning of a meditation or anywhere when you know I have um, um, actually have a, a love list you know just for people's names and I send mm -hmm. uh, love and gratitude to, to mm -hmm. different people and, I, and, and I, I in my opinion there is no time or space or distance and and, and uh, whether they consciously know it or not it, it, it affects them and uh, the energy we put out for everybody Completely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So send what you want to send to someone. So if mm -hmm. someone's hurting physically, yeah. mentally, yeah. you know, you don't send them sadness. Like no. maybe you feel sad for them, but don't send them sadness. Send them love. So it's a reversal. You yeah. have to really kind of catch yourself sometimes. Mm -hmm. What do I really want to send them? Yeah. You know? Yeah, so no pity. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, because cool I don't think Joey. they need more pity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes, I, I agree. That's really cool. Mm hmm. So, um, one of the things that we do on when we get together on Monday mornings is uh, uh, we have a little meditation. We'll do that in a bit, but where we'll, we'll just sit together. So, as as we're chatting, uh, maybe find a space where you can sit and, and uh, um, you know, and, you know, a comfortable spot, preferably on one of my stools. <laughs> They are comfortable. Aren't they great? Yeah, they yeah. are. <laughs> uh, thank you for sitting on yeah. that. I know you started out on the pillow. Yeah. And, and, but they really kind of cup you, don't they? It's like, it's supportive. And, and where sometimes on a pillow, um, 
I can be rocking and not. Right. It's hard to to really to let go. Right. Right. In, into the meditation. Because yeah, yeah a couple of things with that um, is that you know it is the better your alignment, mm -hmm. the more effective your meditation. Because meditation. Like aligning the spine. To yeah. Exactly. The mind. Or, yeah. yeah. Well, exactly. That's mm -hmm. a great way of saying it. And so you want to, I like to think of it as a three-point balance, and that being your sit bones, and then your tailbone as if it's grounding into the earth. And when you're in that triangle, mm -hmm. it naturally brings you a little bit more upright. And this works like that. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Where It just works naturally. Mm -hmm. And then the last part is, of course, because your neck and your chin related to that area, of course, it's part of your spine. Mm -hmm. So you need to bring your chin back into neutral. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of times if, if um, you know, I've seen people where I've said, okay, sit tall. So then what do they do? They don't change this. Mm -hmm. They don't change your spine. They go, <laughs> or they go. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so bring yourself into a taller position mm -hmm. right through your torso. Bring yourself into that three-point balance, mm -hmm. that triangle. Mm -hmm. And then from here, it's just really easy. Just get your chin in the right position. So no texting chin. So texting chin is, you know, <laughs> or the typical driving chin, right? Where they pull it out. So you got to bring it back into neutral. Yes. And then from here, it's that place of, ah, naturally mm -hmm. going yeah. into meditation yeah. feels better because yeah. you're, you're able to breathe deeper. And that's very important when you're, when you're meditating, because that's the essence of, of a meditation is following your breath, because that's what gets you into the present moment is your breath, mm -hmm. following your breath. So if you're, you know, in a typical slouch position, mm -hmm. uh, you're not breathing as effectively. Mm -hmm. I lift myself once again, just, I'm not pulling myself out of anything mm -hmm. that doesn't feel comfortable. It's just aligning myself better. Mm -hmm. Then naturally I can breathe better. And that sense of being grounded, as you said, naturally happens because mm -hmm. now my knees and my hips can relax. I'm not fighting myself in a seated position. Mm -hmm. And that's super important. And for any reason, you know, if someone has knee issues, hip issues, or whatever it is, um, you can sit on a chair, mm -hmm. lie down, you can mm -hmm. lie down, hopefully not I fall asleep. asleep. <laughs> well, <laughs> that is a possibility, but, but um, lying down, you know, sitting in a chair, yeah. standing even, yeah. you know, um, are all possibilities. So tell us more how you coach people around running and, and movement meditation. It's the same principles. So when you're running, very often what happens, um, once again, people run a slouch position, their mm -hmm. shoulders are dropping, their mm -hmm. chin is dropping. So I cue them into a taller lengthened position and often I'll, t I'll start in a seated position mm -hmm. so they feel that in their upper body. Mm -hmm. And then once you feel it in your upper body, then when you stand, you can bring that into a stance much easier because mm -hmm. you feel it. Then from here, um, you know, a lot of times you, you might hear lift your sternum or lift your heart center. So when you do that, though, you don't want to be creating an arch. Mm -hmm. So you still want to feel that three-point balance. Mm -hmm. And when you feel that three-point balance, that will eliminate you from doing this, pulling up your sternum mm -hmm. or pulling up your heart center. Mm -hmm. So I'm out of my three-point balance right now. Mm -hmm. So I come back on my sit bones, feel mm -hmm. my tailbone drawing down as if it's pulling down into the earth, and then just ever so slightly lift up my sternum. This is what I teach for running. Mm -hmm. And bring my chin into neutral. And of course, I'm looking at you, so mm -hmm. I wouldn't be looking at you. I'd be looking straight ahead, yes. um, bringing my chin into neutral. Them, yeah. And then yeah. if I was on my feet, um, this feels very upright, of course, mm -hmm. but I lean more into the balls of my feet yes. rather than into my heels. Yeah. And now I start to kick my feet behind me yeah. rather than in front of me. So I'm propelling forward. Oh, nice. Constantly propelling forward. So your body's actually pulling you. Exactly. And then you add the arms. Yeah. And now you've got a beautiful rhythm in your body. And another interesting point about arms, you know, when you're in a seated position, if you bring your palms up, mm -hmm. like you can meditate with your hands down, of mm -hmm. course, but bring palms up, naturally opens up your shoulders. Wow. And you're able to breathe better. Mm -hmm. So in running, same principle. So in arm glide, I often say, turn your hands just ever so slightly, palms up. And with mm -hmm. that, shoulders open more. You're able to open, run, Nice. in a very up, um, open position. So that's the essence of the um, the running alignment. And then, of course, I do lots of cueing on breathing and, you know, going a little deeper into those principles that mm -hmm. I described to you. But that's the essence of it. So that when you bring your body into that 
into the position that it wants to be in because now we want to be in this position yes but through time mm -hmm. stress driving sitting at a computer we've developed this right mm -hmm. so we want to get out of here out of that and we mm -hmm. want to open and just naturally it's like oh man i feel so much better now running feels so much easier yes so um you know with the right cueing yeah and walking too it's yeah. so important when you're walking so establish that in yeah. your walking and now you can create a walking or running meditation very yeah. easily you love this you, uh, you just got really animated oh you just yeah this is your thing it, it is it yeah. is it's definitely nice. um something i i i'm going to work very tirelessly on sharing and yes. hopefully help lots of other people because I've, I've really worked at this for a number of years yeah. with a lot of students nice. and I've seen the effects and um, you know that that sense of that real uh, depth of enjoyment mm -hmm. that they brought into their running and people who you know were not if you don't want to label them they called themselves not runners you know mm -hmm. and now they have this deep joy of running yeah. and these aren't athletic people what I would consider like you know these are not the people who are you know signing up for all kinds of races but these are people who are maybe doing occasional races but but they're more so they're bringing running into their life as a yeah. form of staying healthy for all those benefits yeah. mind body and spirit yeah. Yeah. and um it becomes part of their life yeah it's what this is your gift well give away to people i i yeah i'm really really excited and happy to do it a lot of this on your website yes yeah. yes and i'm working more on projects with it as yeah. i go you brought a book did you want to show that or, or mention it? Yes. Well, I um, I just bought this on the weekend. I haven't read it. I've, I've perused <laughs> through it. But I think it's it's just a remarkable book. Fa falling book. Awake. Falling Awake. Yeah. Falling Awake. So you're awakening up. Yeah. And that's what this is all about. It's Project awakening up. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. so how to practice mindfulness in everyday life. Boom. Boom. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> And it's a great book from what I've what I've read so far, and I'm sure it is. It's from a author of best-selling. Uh, he's an author, best-selling author. So cool. Yeah, John Cabot Zinn. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, then, part of uh, like there's so many there's so much around meditation, and when we first were looking at this, and, and uh, you know, there's TM and there's Zen meditation and Buddhist meditation, and I mean, there's just uh, uh, a lot of different kind of brands and and I just I, I decided that I didn't want to really go deep into I any particular one because because I, I, I'd like to share this with no matter what people's personal beliefs are whatever practice they follow mm -hmm. and uh, um, so, so I think like it's uh, nice that you can come in and talk about what you're doing but um, if we do a, a little meditation right now would you you know kind of help people get into this state. You know, we're only gonna take three to five minutes, but, uh, and just help us drop in mm -hmm. and leave us there. And sure, we're I'd be happy to. Yeah, and we'll, we'll do that. What what time are we at, Earl? 22. And, uh, okay, well, should we do this now and then talk about it a little bit after? Um, if, if, so we're for about five minutes, and, mm -hmm. and, and uh, for you guys that are watching, just, uh, Gail's gonna uh, help us get to that place and, uh, and then it'll be quiet for a bit. And just feel the quiet. My my feeling is that around the mind, it's a tool. Remember, and and it just it does what it does. Uh, and, and there's that part of us that's kind of watching the mind. Just be there with that space and watch the mind. And remember that it it's its job is to look after us. And so it's racing around, keeping its eye on everything, and, and uh, you know in the past and in the future and. It's actually, it's hard for the mind sometimes to be just here because there's nothing to do and, uh, when we're here and because this is it. And so, but just watch the mind. It's something I believe is like a tool. It's, it's, we're not our minds. We're not our emotions. We're, we're, we're these beings that, you know, we're spiritual beings, I think, in, inhabiting this human uh, existence. And, and, you know, I, I think it's a gift to be here in this human space. And, so uh, that's the deal. Watch the mind. Don't have to worry about it. And if there's noises, just include them. You know, they they just do what they do. And and, uh, and we'll take a three to five minutes. And and uh, Earl will tell us when we're done, so we don't have to we don't have to worry about time. We got it. That's nice. <laughs> it is because it's important just to be able to relax. Yeah, just let go. And with uh, 
when I learned to meditate years and years ago, uh, uh, Sheila, my uh, um, friend that taught me to meditate this way, she taught me with a little clock. It was kind of before cell phones and, and, uh, and, and digital. And we had a little clock and we'd set it for five minutes. And then I could just could let go of time. That's how it began for me, and some almost 40 years ago. So, um, did uh, Gail? Okay. All right. So I invite everybody to you know sit. To, first of all, make sure you're you're in a comfortable position. And going back into a few of those alignment cues that I provided earlier, opening up your palms and feel like bringing your pointer finger and thumb pads together. And sit back feel grounded into your sit bones and feel your tailbone drawing down so feeling that three-point connection into your chair into your mat wherever you are in this moment and lifting tall through your rib cage while keeping your shoulders relaxed and bringing your chin into neutral position and if you're in doubt what that is for you the easiest way is to go out of neutral. So really bring an emphasis into bringing your chin up. And that doesn't feel neutral. Bring it down. That doesn't feel neutral. Find that place where it feels right in the middle. And then ever so slightly, you can think of a string from the crown of your head pulling up or the back of your neck growing a little bit in space. You feel a little taller through that area. But most importantly now, you should feel very comfortable. Very comfortable and drawing deeper into your breathing. Your inhales create expansion. Exhales create contraction. So what that means is as you inhale, you feel your whole belly, your ribs, even into your back between your shoulder blades, you feel that area expanding, growing a little wider, a little bigger. And as you exhale, you feel all that area coming together. You feel your belly button drawing in and as you move through your breath create a gentle pause after your inhale after your exhale so feeling like you're in you're not in a rush to get into the complete breath cycle you're really sinking into a very nice big breath cycle now letting go of tension is really important to find a place of union meditation in your body so let go of all tension between your eyebrows around your eyes so your eye gaze feels very soft and if you like you can bring it upwards towards your eyebrows and your cheeks feel soft and your jaw feels relaxed and your tongue feels soft and resonate that into the palms of your hands and into the soles of your feet your face your hands and your feet have the highest concentration of nerve endings and nadis so energetic nerve endings so when you bring in a melting of tension into those areas you're bringing your body into a place of deeper calm. So bring back your focus into your breath and continue to follow your breath. A beautiful way to sink deeper into your breath is to grow the length of your exhales. So ever so slightly grow the length of your exhale by a second, two, three, there's more. Once again, feel that gentle pause. And then naturally your body finds a bigger inhale. Feel that big expansion in your ribs all around and between your shoulder blades. Following your breath, keep your tongue relaxed, very soft, breathing 
deeply. Another one of your breath from your heart center. So right around your sternum area. And as you feel into that area, you may see colors of pink or green associated with your heart center or any color resonating with you. You may feel warmth, expansion, gratitude. And now you're sinking yourself deeper into a place of opening up your energy Finding that place of inner calm, peace, balance within. Continue to follow your breath and stay there. Come back to the present. And from your hands to heart center. Go deeper into your heart center and feel a sense of elevated consciousness that we've all shared together. Group consciousness is very powerful. And you don't have to all be in one physical presence with one another. We can get the sense of sharing and growing. And as you hold your hands at heart center, this is the mudra for gratitude. So feel gratitude. And set the intention to share it with others today. The gratitude of this moment. And when you're ready, open your eyes. That was really nice. Hope you guys liked that. That was super. Um, I was wondering, um, it, for me, uh, meditation is more about, uh, it's always been a part of a spiritual pursuit, or I don't know if, if I can even call it a, more of a spiritual uh, realization or awakening than a pursuit, but, but, uh, um, but there's a lot of benefits to meditation, um, you know, physical and emotional and mental and, mm. and, and it, uh, maybe could you share a little bit about those kind of benefits? Absolutely. Um, well, first, first off, you're calming down your nervous system. Mm -hmm. When you calm down your nervous system, I mean, it, life, perception of life changes very quickly. Mm -hmm. You calm down from the inside to create the calm on the outside of your life. So yeah, so with that, there's benefits to lots of, you know, many, many different benefits, heart health, you know, the list goes on. Mm -hmm. um, but one great thing that you touched on that I personally, I think why a lot of people like meditation is that sense of, of I don't want to say finding answers, but you know, we're often in a world by ourselves. I mean, we have lots of people around us at any given time, but you know, we, we're constantly, you know, trying to figure out who we are, what's our purpose, where are we going? Am I happy with this? Am I happy with that? And you know, and and the answers are all within us. 
our inner wisdom, our knowledge is all within us. And when we quiet down in a meditation, or take the moment to quiet down, we have that little voice within us that speaks. And you know, and some people might say, well, I've never heard a voice, but, um, or if I hear a voice, am I crazy? But it's, <laughs> it's not necessarily, and when I say it's a voice, it's more of a knowing. Yeah. It's more of a knowing mm -hmm. that, ah, you're in the right place, or you know, a sense of sometimes a lot of creative thoughts come to people. Yeah. And um, for me, that's a huge benefit of meditation because um, you just can't get that anywhere else in anything else you do. Yeah. You know, you can you can go and see. You know, if you wanted to go see a psychic, and they're going to tell you, you know, um, you know, you've got all this great fortune coming your way, or or whatever hardship. But ultimately, you know, you're the destiny of your own life. And you know, when when you touch in with that personal side of you that's how you create your own path and your mm. the path and, and love so life that you a want. knowingness comes yes uh, where with a psychic or something not that there's anything wrong with yeah with no not with at all i don't mean readings, that at all yeah. but it, it's but with like a psychic it's like oh i wonder if that's maybe the truth or is yeah. that you know but i know that when i you know hit that spot and when i have those that still small voice that says yes. you know, hey this is the way yes um then it's, I know it's not a, uh, you know, it becomes a, uh, a, like a connection, like a, you know, um, I, you know, sometimes talk about the, you know, it, it's a divine connection. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, um, so, but then we're, there we are back at spiritual, you mm -hmm. know, and, and um, I, I find that, uh, you know, I've heard that meditation is really good for uh, when we're dealing with addiction, you know, oh, definitely. dealing with uh, all kinds of physical good for sleep yes absolutely it, it, anxiety uh, sleep yeah um supposed to be good for libido yeah <laughs> i mean <laughs> when i said earlier the list goes on it really does because yeah. you have um awakened your your body mm -hmm. and and also um you know i liken it to taking out the garbage you know yeah. uh you know every day or every few days in our own life yeah. and our household we take out garbage like mm -hmm. literally take out garbage from our house so yeah. meditation clears out garbage in our mind wow and you know all right so thank you thank you very much it was so nice to be with yeah. here with you so we're and gonna, everybody we're going to post uh, um uh, gail's de details and and how to get in touch with her and see what she's doing and check in on her facebook information and her website and all that kind of stuff so um uh, please share gail's information and and um we're um, we'd love it if you share this uh, with your friends and, and uh, uh, follow us on um, Instagram and Facebook and YouTube. We, we're so close to, in YouTube they have this, uh, when you have a thousand subscribers, the world changes in YouTube and, and we're like 935. Uh. And, and uh, so if, if you're listening and, and you're on, you, you know, if you have a YouTube subscription, go and subscribe to us. <laughs> so uh, we, it's kind of this magic place. I want to see what happens when we get when we have a thousand subscribers. And, um, so that's it. Come visit us at the store. There's you know always hugs here, and and uh, you know the the whole idea of the the message of love. I think meditation and love are very connected, and, and uh, all of our little meditation pieces that you can put in your space are infused with love. Love from Bali, and uh, you know love from the people who make these for us. And, to share that love with you so that's it we love you and, and uh, uh, talk soon uh, comment if you'd like and we'll get back to you on anything that you might as you're watching this if you, if you have any questions uh, we'll refer them to Gail if, if, uh, if you'd like it that way okay cheers <laughs>